Hello, this is Hayden from FowlsOnFantasy.com and welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to show you how to add crescendos and other dynamics to your piece in MuseScore. I'm also going to go over how powerful dynamics really are to your final piece by showing you an example of a song with and without dynamics included. So to begin with, let's preface exactly what is a crescendo. A crescendo is a gradual increase in loudness in a piece of music. So in other words, it's a change in dynamics from low to high. The opposite of a crescendo is a decrescendo. So to illustrate my points and all of these, I'm going to be using a song that I've been writing for my visual novel, a Lifeless Prototype. So this is the main theme. However, this is only written for piano at the moment. So when we talk about loudness and volume in music, while basically that is what we are talking about and that is the effect, we're more talking about the velocity a note is played at. And that can be denoted by a sign such as P, F, M, P. And what these are saying is how much velocity we are to hit or strike a note. And the direct correlation of how hard we hit a note is its volume, its loudness. So from now on, whenever I talk about velocity, I'm talking about volume. The dynamics that we are going to be focusing on are all of these, all the way up to fortissimo. So from PPP to FFF. We don't really need to know about the other ones just yet. In MuseScore, the softest dynamic that we can get that we're going to be using is pianissimo. That is quite the mouthful of a word. The next loudest is pianissimo. After that, it is piano. And then we get to mezzo piano and mezzo forte. These are your default ranges in terms of dynamics and velocity. Forte is a dynamic range that can be considered to be loud. So we have forte, fortissimo, and fortissimo. So my score uses all of the range that I just went over. So it uses from PPP to FFF. So to show you how to add a crescendo and dynamics into MuseScore, I'm gonna look at this section of my piece. So let me just play it for you. Now, as you can probably hear, it went from mezzo forte to piano in a decrescendo. So let me just delete all of these. And now I'm gonna show you how to add them back in. So from our dynamics palette, we're going to select a dynamic of choice. So in this case, I'm going to select mezzo piano. When I drag it out, it's going to snap to notes. So in this case, I want to snap it to the first beat of my bar. So let me just snap that in there by letting it go. Then we want to put in a piano at the end of the movement. So we're just going to drop it in and snap it in. Now that we have our beginning dynamic and our ending dynamic, we want to open up our lines drop down menu and bring in a, well, I mean, I bring in a crescendo for some reason, but what you want to bring in is a decrescendo, which is the opposite of this pin. In MuseScore, decrescendos are known as diminuendos, which is just another name for them. The next thing that we want to do is we want to double click on our pin and as you'll see it will show us where the effect is being applied till. To increase the length of this we're going to want to hold shift and then press the arrow key in the direction which we want to change or increase its length. So in this case it's to the right. Then we're going to change the length of our diminuendo till the maroon bar is just past the note where our second dynamic is applied to. So let's hear this. And there we have it. We have successfully put in dynamics and a diminuendo to boot into our song. For notation reasons, please don't do what I did and add a crescendo line to where a diminuendo should be because it just looks sloppy. Now I'm going to show you what this song sounds like without dynamics and then I'm going to show you what it sounds like with dynamics just to prove how important they are in your scoring.
And there we go. If you would like to listen to the full version of this song, you can head over to my other channel, Fowls on Fantasy, and you can listen to it for free. I hope this tutorial has been informative and I, I hope that it's shown you how powerful dynamics can be in your scoring. And as always, if you found this tutorial informative, please give it a like. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much. My name is Hayden Falson from FalsonFantasy.com, signing off.